Python for AWS. Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working in AWS. Monday to Friday, that's within the financial services sector. And I like nothing more in my spare time than making videos for my YouTube channel and keeping my website up to date with the latest AWS tech. So today is an introductory lesson to using Python to interact with AWS services. To do this, we're actually going to use the Cloud9 Development Studio on AWS. I was trying to think of a way that we could all work together and not have all the variation between our local machines. Because some people will be running Mac like me, others will be running Windows, some will be running Linux. So to keep it generic for everyone, I've decided that I'll take you through the process of setting up the Cloud9 IDE and it's on the free tier, so it won't cost us a penny, and then we can all follow along together. And it just removes that complexity that everyone might face on their own machine. So once we have that Cloud9 development environment configured, we're going to create Python code that interacts with AWS. To do that, we're going to use the Bodo3 library. The Bodo3 library is the standard AWS library that lets us interact with its services. Libraries are just a set of predefined code that someone else has wrote, and we get to take the benefit of that. And there's two things that we need to look at inside that Bodo3 library. The first is the client. Bodo3 can interact with many different AWS services, but when you go to use it, you specify the client, and that's just an interface that you want to use to interact with the service. Each service has its own client, and you just call it by putting that service's name or code name into the client method. And the second part we're going to use is the methods. So methods are just predefined recipes that tell AWS with Python that we want to do something. So in the case of today, we're going to use two methods. The first is going to be create bucket, and that's going to create the bucket, and that takes two arguments. The first argument is the bucket name, and the second argument is the region in which we want to create that bucket. The next method, or recipe, if you want to think of it that way, we're going to look at using the S3 client that we're going to use. It's going to list the buckets in our account. When we send off this request to AWS to list the buckets in our account using the client and the method, it's going to return us a message. And that's called the response. And we're going to print that response out to screen so we can see the list of buckets. I'm going to take you through all the steps we need on the AWS console. And that includes setting up Cloud9. So let's get started. Okay, so I've um, logged into the AWS console already. So using the, the search bar at the top, uh, we're going to type in Cloud9. And Cloud9 is a service that we're going to use, as I explained earlier in the video, that allows us to run an IDE, an interactive development environment in AWS. As I mentioned earlier, I think this is the simplest way that everyone can follow along at home, rather than taking in all the nuances of the different operating systems and Python libraries that we could possibly have. So if everyone wants to follow along exactly as I am, you're going to need an AWS account anyway to use Python on AWS. This is probably the simplest thing. So the next thing to do then is to create an environment. We're going to click on the right hand side, create environment. I'm just going to call this cloud. Uh, nine hyphen Johnny hyphen test that I'll do for now. Next step, then in configuration settings, let's keep it as a new EC2 instance. Let's keep it in the free tier because we don't need anything powerful to do this. So let's keep it free. Let's leave everything as default. And then this will just cut out the instance after it's been idle for 30 minutes. So leave that as default. If you don't touch it for 30 minutes, it cuts off. You're not paying for it anyway, but it's always good to have. Next step. Just gives you an overview of what's happened. So Cloud9, Johnny Test, we're going to use an EC2. It's going to be a T2 micro, which is in that free tier. And then we're just going to um, create the environment. This takes a couple of minutes. Um, so I'm just going to pause the video here and then we can pick it up once we're ready to go. Okay, that took about one minute and 30 seconds. As you can see, Cloud9 is now up and running. It brings you straight to your IDE. If you're following along on a different um, IDE on your local machine, this is the point where you need to pick back up in the video. So the first thing we're going to do is just close down these two welcome windows. We don't need those. We're going to go over to the left hand side and you're going to right hand click. You're going to go down to new file and we're going to call this file main.py. Now, this is just a file and the .py is the Python extension. So this tells the IDE that, hey, this file is going to contain Python code. And traditionally, the first 
file that we create is called main. I'm going to keep this really simple today and write this as scripting. There are more complicated ways to write Python and some would say more correct. But because this is an introduction class, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible for you following at home. So I've just double clicked on that file and you can see that it opens at the top. And the first thing we need to do is use that Boto3 library. But Boto3 isn't installed anywhere in our IDE. We don't have the library or the code that comes with it in other words to use. So the first thing we do is go down to the bottom and I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And what we need to do next is type in the command that actually installs the library for us. So just follow along and type in sudo, which means we want elevated permissions. pip3, which is a type of installer for Python, so it's just a program that helps you install things for Python 3. Install means install, and then boto3 means install the boto3. So this little phrase here means give me elevated permissions. Use pip3, which is a tool that helps you install pre-built libraries for Python. Install means install, and boto3 means boto3. Hit enter. Your IDE will now run off to the internet. Go to pip3, find the boto3 library, and install it, and you can see that we have successfully installed the library. That's the first part of it. So the library is now available for us to use. The next step is that we need to import the library into this file to tell it that we want to use it. And that's quite simple. It's just an import statement, photo 3, and that's everything done. As we go along, if you want to save, if you're on a Mac and you want to save as we go along, it's command and S. If you want to save and you're on a Windows machine, it's control and S. Alternatively, you can go file and there is a save button here as well. So there's save, save as, save all. As I mentioned, we're going to keep this simple today. And as we talked about earlier in the video, the first thing you need is a client. So a client is just an interface that lets you interact with AWS. And in this case, we're going to use an S3 client. And the first thing we need to do is give it a variable and declare it. So we're going to call this S3 underscore client. So this is just what we're going to call it. We're going to set that equal to the Boto3 library that we've just imported dot client so we're getting the client method or in other words we're using the boto3 library to get us an interface to interact with s3 so as you can see client equals boto3 dot client s3 and that means then we now have the ability to interact with s3 and aws the next step is to actually do something so what we want to do in this instance is create a bucket. So it's S3 client, and it will start to help you fill things out. So this client, this variable that we've just named as the S3 client, dot. We then want to create a bucket. So we're going to create an S3 bucket. We then want to open and close our brackets, but go one step back in. We want to type bucket in capital letters equals and then you need to give the bucket a unique name. So there's a load of naming conventions and I'm going to keep mine simple. So I'm going to call mine Johnny hyphen Chivers hyphen test hyphen one hyphen Boto. That should do the trick. And remember, and remember your bucket name has to be unique within AWS. Then the second argument we put in, and that's what we call um, these things for lack of a better word to go inside a method, is a, is a create bucket configuration. So, it is create, capital C, bucket, spelled correctly, configuration, equal to two curly brackets, two single quotes, and then it's location constraint. So location constraint, that has to be spelled correctly. Code on, two more single quotes. And then we have to put in the location constraint. So I'm going to create my bucket at EU West 1. Oops, spelled that wrong. And then once you've actually put this in, you need to save again. So I'm just going to save, or you can go up, file, save. So let's do a quick look at this again. Import Boto3, get the S3 client, create the bucket. And then the second argument is create a bucket configuration, location constraint, EU West 1, 2, 
curly brackets on either side, single quotes around the, the text, and then a colon in the middle. That's actually a JSON file. Save. And then we want to run. So just click the big run button at the top. And as you can see, exited with code zero means that it ran successfully. Happy days. Second stage, let's get a list of the buckets back and we can actually see it's created. So go to the line that you've just wrote and what we need to do then is put in a hashtag. Oh, put in a hashtag. And what I've just done in there is commented out that line of code. So that code won't run anymore when I hit this big run button. That's important because a bucket can only has to have a unique name and I don't want to recreate this bucket or I would get an error. So the next thing I want to do, as I said, is bring back the list of buckets. So again, let's get a variable up that we want to assign something to. So this time it's going to be the response of the S3 client dot list underscore buckets buckets. And then I want to print that response. So this time I'm using the S3 client as we explained before. To list the buckets, which is going to be equal to this variable response, and then I just want to print out the list of S3 buckets it returns. So let's run that. Okay, it's not the nice, the most neatest formatted, and this is just the beginner course, so I'm not going to format it. But as you can see, and I have to blur out some of this because it brings back um, buckets that are, are sensitive. As you can see, right in front of me here is the bucket that we just created. Okay, and there's one final step. You may want to go into your console and delete that bucket. It's not going to cost you any money because there's no information in it, but it's always great to have free space.